Let's take a quick look at just how easy it is to build an app using Google Sheets. We'll begin in a new Google spreadsheet, and I'll start by giving our sheet a title. This app will be about igneous rocks, and we're going to collect information on different types of rocks, including name, description, photos, and links. So let's just get our spreadsheet set up and looking good. I'm going to bold my header column and make the text a little bit bigger just so it's easier to read. And I'm also going to apply alternating colors to make the overall spreadsheet just a little bit easier to navigate. Now that I've got my spreadsheet all set up and looking good, I'm going to begin adding content, which I'm going to grab from this geology.com website. First thing we're going to do is grab a name of a rock as well as a quick description. I'm just going to copy and paste for this example. So in the name column, I'm going to put the name of the rock. In the description column, I'm going to paste that description. And I'm going to set it to wrap so it's a little bit easier to view. Then I need a photo. So I want this picture. So I need to right click on it and copy the image address because Glide uses links to show photos. And then I'm going to get a link to the Andesite page itself so people can read more about this rock if they'd like to. So I'm going to copy it and paste it in my spreadsheet. And now all I need to do is repeat this process with all of the different rocks I'd like to include in my app. Let's go ahead and do that now. OK, so now I have this kind of boring looking spreadsheet full of information about 10 different types of igneous rocks. Let's take this and make it into something much prettier and easier to navigate. Now that I've got my data all set up within my Google Sheet, I'm going to head over to the Glide Apps website. If it's the first time I've used this tool, I'm going to click on Sign Up and use the Sign In with Google feature. I've been here before, so I'm going to click on Log In. I'm going to sign in with Google using my Google account. Once I'm in, I'm going to hover over the Create App button and select From Google Sheet. Now I can select the Google Sheet that I was just working on and click Select. Glide Apps is going to analyze the data within my spreadsheet and give me a sample layout to start with. You can see it's pretty good without doing any work. It lists all of our rocks with a little snippet of the description and all of the images associated with them. And when you click on any of these rocks, it brings you to a detail view where you can see the full description as well as the link that we included within our data table. But let's make this a little bit prettier. We'll start by making this list a little bit nicer looking. You'll notice over here in the properties area, I have lots of different things to choose from, including a more compact list, a tile view, and even a card view, amongst other things. I think for this example, the tile view might look the best. But I want to tweak it to make it a little bit prettier. I'm going to scroll down a little bit, and under Data, I'm going to decide what information goes where. So the title would be the name of the rock, and so Glide Apps correctly identified that as the correct item to include for title. The details, by default, are giving me the rock description, but I don't think I want to include the details on this page. I think the user should have to tap on one of the rocks to view the details. So I'm going to select this to turn that off. Finally, the images are being pulled from the column of our spreadsheet where we pasted the links to the photos. So that is correctly set up. Scrolling down a little bit, I have lots of options. And the first thing I want to do is change the shape of each of these tiles so that we can better see the photos of the rocks. So I'm going to click here, and I have lots of things to choose from, including squares, circles, and various other aspect ratios. I think 3 by 2 looks good. But I do think we can squeeze more information on here so that the user doesn't have to scroll so much to see all of the samples. And we can do that by increasing the number of tiles per row. That looks pretty good. We have some additional options to choose from. Right now we're viewing it in a list mode, but I can change this to a horizontal scrolling mode to give it more of a native app feel. 
but that doesn't work so well with our current data, so I'm going to change it back. I can control if the corners are rounded or squared off, and how much padding or space there is between items. It will also automatically crop the images if it detects faces in the photos. I don't have that here, so I'm not going to change that. Scrolling down, I can now edit the text style a little bit. Right now, the titles are off to the bottom of each thumbnail image, but by clicking on this option right here, the titles can be overlaid right on top of the image themselves. You can even control in what part of the image those titles appear. I think this looks good. Finally, I can change the size of the font so that it's most visible and most pleasing. I can even make it all caps if I'd like. There, that looks good. Of course, I'm going through quickly here. We have lots more options, but we'll start with this. Now, we're going to go into the detail view for each rock, or what the user would see when you tap on the rock. By default, Glide Apps has included this title element that shows an image with a title and a description over the top of it. That doesn't look so good because we have so much text here, so let's tweak it a little bit. I'm going to come over to what are called the components. These are all the things that make up this detail page, and you can see here's that title component. So I can click on that and tweak it a little bit. I notice that the title is the name of the rock. That's what we see right here. And then the details would be the description of the rock. And that's all of this text right here. And then finally, the image, again, is pulling from the photo column of our spreadsheet. I don't think it looks good having this much text, so I'm going to turn off the description. There, that's better. Now we can see the photo. But the problem is, I still want to have the description on this page so users can read about this rock. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to add another component. And you'll see I've got lots of different tools that I can use to add information to this page. I want something simple though, I just want to include some text. So I have three options. Action text is when you want to include a link. Rich text is when you want to use this format of styling called Markdown. And then just simple text is the most basic, and I'm going to use that now. And you can see right there is my block of text. If I needed to, I could go into the data area and change where that text is being pulled from. But in this case, Glide got it right. I want the description to show. I have lots of options as to what the style of the text is. I can make it smaller, larger, or even in a heading style. But I'm going to leave it as just regular text for now. I even have the option to truncate it so it only shows a small amount and the user has to click on more to see the rest. That's not really necessary here, so I'm going to turn that off. I would, however, like to move that block of text up so it's directly underneath the photo. So all I need to do is take that text component and drag it up underneath the title component. And now it looks good. Though I will say, they look like they're a little bit too close together. So let's add some space in between the photo and the description. And we can do that by adding what's called a separator component. The separator component can optionally show a line divider, but I don't want that here. I do, however, want to have a decent amount of space. So I'm going to change it to a medium amount of space. Now you'll notice there's nothing that has changed in the app, and that's because the separator is currently at the very bottom of the page. So I'm just going to grab that and move it up beneath the photo. And there you go. Now I have a nice amount of room between my title element and my description element. In fact, I'm going to duplicate this and put it down beneath the description to spread things out a little bit more. Finally, I have this link element here, and this is pulling from the link column in our spreadsheet. And users can click on it and it will take them out to that website. I could have done this in a lot of different ways, but Glide Apps by default put it in as this link component. Just to give you a sense, I could also add a button component and make that access that link by clicking on Features and choosing Link from the Open Link Action area. I can change the text on that so it says something like Learn More about this rock. 
And now users will know that if they click on this, it'll take them to more information. I like the way that looks, so I'm going to delete the previous link component that was automatically added by Glide. And there's my page. Pretty simple, but pretty effective. The cool thing is that this layout that I have applied to this Diabase page right here is automatically applied to all of my rocks. So if we take a look at, say, Obsidian, the same layout is applied. And if I tweak that layout, it will change it for all of my different rocks. You'll notice also that this page is searchable. So you can type in a few letters, and it will automatically search within real time. That's helpful when you have a lot of data to show. There are lots of other options we can look at. And I'll show you a couple more now before we finish up. I'm going to head over to this cog icon for settings on the left-hand side. Here I have lots of things to choose from, and we'll begin with the appearance of the app. Here I can select an accent color that applies to different elements of the app, and this allows me to customize it however I want. I can even use a color picker to select the exact tone that I'd like if I'm trying to match a website or some other resource. I also have a variety of themes to choose from. These themes are applied automatically site-wide and will change the overall look and feel of your app. You also have the option to match the device's theme. And what that means is, if I choose to have a light display, but I have this checked off, if a user is viewing my app and their device, whether it's their phone or their laptop, is set to dark mode, it will automatically adjust my Glide app so that it looks good on their device. You have the option as to whether you want to turn that on or off. Down below, I have four choices of font collections to use. Right now, I have it set to system fonts, which I like because it makes the app feel like a true native app, mimicking the look of other native apps on the user's device. But I do have the option to switch and override that to a more custom look. You have a few to choose from. And with that, in just a couple of minutes, I've created a spreadsheet of simple data and turned it into a full native app. Of course, we're just barely scratching the surface with what a Glide app can do. But this gives you a sense of just how easy it is to get started pulling data from a Google Sheet and creating something that's pretty and much more usable than a traditional spreadsheet. I hope you found this helpful, and definitely let me know if you make some cool things with Glide apps.